Hi, my name is Mary Catherine Webb, and uh, I go by MK, that is my preference, and my preferred pronouns are she, her, hers. I would also be fine with they, them, theirs, uh, just anything other than masculine pronouns. I am from a small town in Middle Tennessee called McMinnville, Tennessee. I lived there from the time that I was born until I was 18, and then I wanted to get as far away from it as I possibly could while still keeping my Tennessee Hope Lottery Scholarship so that I could afford to go to college. Uh, and that is how I ended up at the University of Memphis the first time <laughs> for my undergraduate and graduate degrees. Um, and then I moved to St. Louis so for law school and attended St. Louis University School of Law and worked in the Missouri State Public Defender's Office in St. Louis City. So when I was in St. Louis, I would say that I was from Memphis because that's where I felt that I had really grown up and it felt the most like home to me uh, in contrast to what happened later. Uh, so about a year ago, uh, my husband accepted a tenure track position in the Department of Criminology and Criminal Justice and we relocated to Memphis, him a little before me, but me about just over a year ago. Um, so even though I am currently living from Memphis, and I would consider myself from Memphis. Neither of those things are technically true. <laughs> I am from McMinnville and most recently just moved from St. Louis. So a uh, little confusing for me. Um, I do not currently work in the field. The most experience I have is kind of only tangential as a public defender. We were often called upon to do social work aspects, especially when judges wanted us to, you know, track down a housing plan or something like that for a client, but I did not specifically and will not take credit where I do not believe that I earned it. So I did my best, but I uh, could never say that I have been in the social work field. I am choosing to go into the social work field because of my experiences as a lawyer and in the legal community. Uh, in law school, you aren't you're given a set of ethical rules that only kind of really monitors what you can and can't do as a lawyer or an advocate. It doesn't really teach you how to deal with clients or deal with people. You really kind of learn that on the job. And if you're a public defender, that means you're going to get a crash course in it because you immediately have a thousand cases and a million clients and they're facing all these difficult problems. And the biggest thing that I noticed was that no one had trained me to deal with any of the human problems that my clients were having. So the law almost asks you to look at each client's case as a hypothetical and it's your job to solve it, apply the law, be an advocate for what should be the outcome and that's where it ends. Um, but frequently as a public defender, we would find that our clients had much more complicated problems than just their legal ones, or their legal ones would be complicated by their personal ones, or their life situations, or where they were coming from. And the law does not at all prepare you for how to help that person holistically. It really only designs you to help their legal issue. And that's what I want to do in social work, is learn to have clients and treat them and help them holistically. My eventual goal is to open a legal clinic in partnership with the University of Memphis's uh, main campus, social work departments, criminology departments, psychology departments, and their law school, which currently does not have a criminal defense clinic, and unite kind of all of those uh, resources and uh, places of advocacy to create a holistic defense clinic so that uh, each juvenile that I would represent, that's where my specialty is, and that's what um, my preference is going to be, having worked in the juvenile system and seeing how conflicted and one-sided it can be for kids. Everyone who works in the juvenile court, the judge, the legal uh, officer, or the juvenile prosecutor, kind of have similar names, or deputy juvenile officer, which is kind of like the child's probation officer. All of those individuals work together. They work in the same building. They report to each other. They're all paid from the same payroll. Uh, they all actually work for the technical, the ju uh, judicial system. So that means that they all work for the judge, which can be really uh, a conflict of interest. And the only person who's ever in a room 
representing the wants, the needs of the child as expressed by the child is the defense attorney. And uh, because we don't have social workers to help manage our cases, we don't have all of the same things to combat what the state is saying all the time. And so a lot of the times the de facto is to just go along with what the state is arguing because they have the better resources, they have the caseworkers, they have the experts at hand, they have the testimony, they've got it all. So what I want to do is offer it from a defense perspective where I have in-house experts that I work with through the university and each child is assigned a caseworker who can also conduct their own analysis and examinations of the child to also come up with an alternative treatment plan so we can hopefully better combat uh, juvenile justice issues in uh, that setting. I think social work is going to be the best thing to prepare me for that because there are so many issues that come along, especially with juvenile clients that need to be dealt with and the justice, the juvenile justice system actually wants to deal with um, and before a case is resolved. So I think social work will provide me with that opportunity and also teach me to be a better advocate, not just to answer someone's legal questions, but to help them wholly and completely as a person. So that's why I chose to go back. Um, one goal that I have for this course, particularly since this is really about teaching us those ethics and um, professionalism, is to learn those skills that I did not learn as a lawyer. Uh, like I said before, they kind of throw you to the wolves and my de facto um, as an empathetic person would be to get overly involved in particularly some clients' lives or their cases or their stories and oftentimes push the boundary of what I should be doing. I definitely took all my work home with me and very much invested in a lot of my clients on a personal level. Um, and I know that I cannot continue to do that. It's not good for my mental health. It's not good for my physical health, but I am doing my best and hoping that this class will teach me how to set those boundaries, how to reanalyze my values and make sure that my professional behavior comports to those values and those ethical standards and really just how to do this in a better way way. Uh, one interesting thing about me that's actually kind of related to also my switch in careers is that I am at 30, a five-year cancer survivor for my five-year anniversary of uh, being no evidence of disease will be March 7th of this year, so I'm very excited. Um, but I was diagnosed at 25 when I was in law school uh, with a BRCA1 mutation. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar, that is a genetic marker that uh, pretty much signs, seals, and delivers your cancer diagnosis. Uh, if you find out, I actually got the diagnosis first, then found out we had the genetic marker later. My parents were tested to see if they had passed on the genetic marker unknowingly, and turns out I am what's called a de novo case, and that means that only 0.02% of the cancer having population, it's not general population, cancer having population, are de novo cases. Um, so it's extremely rare, uh, very unlikely, but it does mean that my health has to be such a priority in my life. And when you're a public defender or you're a trial lawyer, the court and the law don't really see that as being your priority is preservation of self. And in thinking about what I wanted to do, knowing that I could no longer be a trial attorney because new cancer cells were starting to develop in my body from the stress and the overwork conditions that are present in a public defender's office, I knew that I couldn't do anything that was outside of my area of passion or interest because I would be so bored, um, <laughs> just endlessly bored. But I needed something that would help me be the kind of advocate that I wanted to be, but do it in a healthy way. And I spent a lot of time talking to my boss, Matt Mahaffey, um, who had his MSW as well. He was also a public defender for a while, had a terrible experience with the murder case, got his MSW, and then was convinced to come back to the public defender's office to work in a more social work capacity. So he worked with all of our extremely mentally ill 
um, clients, extremely intellectually disabled clients, and all our clients who were kind of in what we called treatment courts, so either a drug court or a mental health court or something like that. And he was such an inspiration to me, so I uh, locked in on that and definitely talked to him, and he strongly encouraged me that this would be a way that he thought I could do it. So that is why I'm here. What I'm hoping to get out of it is to finally learn some of those skills to help me be as healthy as I can as I continue to go about my practice both as a lawyer and a social worker. So I look forward to talking with all of you this semester and the rest of the time that we're here. And thanks for listening.